Here's some of the stories trending this week at NASA. During a November 2nd media event at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, Administrator Charlie Bolden was joined by Goddard Center Director Chris Scolese and Senior Project Scientist Dr. John Mather for an update on the James Webb Space Telescope, including a rare glimpse at the telescope's primary mirror. Engineers and technicians recently completed a center of curvature test on the mirror, which measures the shape of the mirror. This is the first important optical measurement before the mirror goes into the testing chambers. Meanwhile, the telescope's sunshield layers also have been finished. This will protect Webb's sensitive instruments from the sun when the telescope is in space. The Webb telescope, which is targeted for launch in 2018, will study every phase in the history of our universe, including the cosmos's first luminous glows, the formation of planetary systems capable of supporting life, and the evolution of our own solar system. On October 30th, Kazakhstan time, the International Space Station's Expedition 49 crew, including NASA astronaut Kate Rubens, returned to Earth. The Soyuz spacecraft carrying Rubens and her crewmates, Anatoly Ivanishin of the Russian space agency Roscosmos, and Takuya Onishi of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, touched down safely in Kazakhstan. During their 115 days in space, the Expedition 49 crew members contributed to hundreds of experiments in biology, biotechnology, physical science, and earth science, and Rubens became the first person to sequence DNA in space. Meanwhile, pre-launch training continues for Expedition 5051, the next crew headed to the space station. NASA's Peggy Whitson, Oleg Novitsky of the Russian space agency Roscosmos, and Thomas Pesquet of the European Space Agency participated in traditional ceremonies in Star City, Russia, November 1st, with members of the backup crew. They later headed to the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan for final preparations for the launch of Novitsky, Whitson, and Pesquet on November 17th Eastern Time for a five-month mission on the space station. Also on November 1st, NASA held an Agency Innovation Mission Day to highlight innovation by NASA employees across the agency. The event featured a keynote speech by Deputy Administrator David Newman from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The endeavor also featured online cross-center collaboration activities and other special events to allow employees across the agency to pitch innovative ideas. AIM Day is a project of the NASA FIRST Leadership Program, which is designed to develop future agency leaders. On October 30th, NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory, or SDO, experienced a partial solar eclipse in space when it caught the moon passing in front of the sun. The lunar transit lasted an hour, with the moon covering about 59% of the sun at the peak of its journey across the face of the sun. SDO captured these images in extreme ultraviolet light, which is invisible to human eyes. The imagery is colorized in red to make it visible. NASA's Magnetospheric Multiscale Mission, or MMS, now holds the Guinness World Record for highest altitude fix of a GPS signal. The mission's four identical satellites set the record while operating in a highly elliptical orbit 43,500 miles above Earth. The team of satellites incorporates GPS measurements into their precise tracking systems, which require extremely sensitive position and orbit calculations to guide tightly flying formations. Earlier this year, MMS achieved the closest flying separation of a multi-spacecraft formation, with only four and a half miles between the four satellites. MMS is giving scientists new insight into a phenomenon known as magnetic reconnection which occurs as the Sun and Earth's magnetic fields interact. Studying this process could help scientists better understand other naturally occurring phenomena around the universe. And that's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on social media and visit www.nasa.gov.